This video is actually a follow-up to one I made a year ago that went over some quirks I noticed in the HD collection version of Devil May Cry on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Capcom recently announced that they'll be porting Devil May Cry to the Switch sometime this summer, and I felt that this would be the best time to bring attention back to the various issues with the previous round of ports. I encourage you to check out that last video if you haven't already, as my hope is for this to be just a quick supplementary video. The game received a patch after I uploaded my last video, and I was told that the issue with Griffin's chest not opening was corrected. I didn't bother to check for a while, and I just kind of assumed this was true. On PC at least, I found that this has not been fixed, as you can see here. As for all the other things that weren't fixed with that patch, here's a list I've compiled. This video will strictly be going over these issues either for the first time or to provide additional examples. For pretty much everything else, check out the previous video. I went over this quite a bit in my last video. I'm not a game developer, so I went with my gut and called these ugly alpha effects, but I've since heard it more accurately described as an issue with sprite rotation. You can see a clear example here. I was pretty mad with myself for failing to notice this while making the last video. But the orbs don't just sound wrong, they also look wrong. They're a bit more boring without proper sprite rotation, don't you think? I'm not sure what to call these. Lens flares? They seem to be programmed to subtly rotate as the camera moves around in the PlayStation 2 version, but now they don't. It's a really minor thing, so you might have to rewind a few times. My gut tells me that a lot of people might actually be glad this is gone, as the removal of distance fog, along with the over-sharpened textures, lends the game a more high-contrast visual makeup, and a lot of people tend to like that. I've got to say though, I strongly feel the original look should be respected and maintained. This fog can be seen in many areas of the game, though sometimes it's very subtle. A lot of old games would use fog to conceal pop-in or less detailed geometry, but here it seems to be used simply to alter the look of a lot of areas in the game. The atmosphere and aesthetic of the game just isn't quite the same without it as a result. Here I just wanted to quickly include another example of a heat or blur related effect that has pretty much gone missing. Dante stopping this bike in midair just isn't as impactful without the strong effect that's present in the PlayStation 2 version. The HD collection port seems to be a bit quiet overall, but on PC at least the pre-rendered videos are even quieter. Here at the end of the game, this volume discrepancy becomes clear. It looks like we have a winner. Jack. <laughs> Goodbye, and when you do come back, give my regards to my son, will ya? If you happen to work for Capcom, or the team porting Devil May Cry to the Switch, this is the end of the video. I hope you'll consider making this next port the definitive version of Devil May Cry. If any improvements are made to the Switch version, it would be fantastic if they could be carried over to previous and future HD releases. This game is a classic. It's a hugely important part of the history of action games and video games at large. Please be good to it. If you're someone who thinks motion blur is the devil, please stick around for a moment. A lot of people commenting on the last video felt that the lack of motion blur on Dante was actually a conscious decision by the porting team to make the game look better. That may be true for all I know, 
but I feel this restrained use of a sort of faked object motion blur to emphasize certain actions by Dante still looks really cool to this day. The Devil May Cry 3 team seemed to think so too, as they implemented their own take on this effect at times. Huh. 